On the campaign trail today, both candidates focusing on the biggest swing state on the map, holding dueling rallies later in Tampa, Florida. Hello, Phoenix. With five days until Election Day, the president is touting what's expected to be a blockbuster economic report out this morning. I think it's going to be maybe the biggest number in the history of our country, GDP. That's our big number, right? Data today will likely show skyrocketing economic growth. The U.S. gross domestic product expected to increase by a record 25 to 30 percent, that number from the third quarter when businesses started reopening. In a memo titled Trump's doomed effort to paint a rosy economic picture, the Biden campaign slamming the president, saying his mission accomplished rhetoric does not capture the true direction or state of the U.S. economy. On Wall Street Wednesday, the Dow plunged 943 points, the worst day since June as coronavirus cases rise and stimulus talks stall. The president in Arizona last night staying focused on the economy, revealing what he's calling the American Dream Plan. Over the next four years, the American Dream Plan will bring more than two million new jobs to Hispanic communities, create over a half a million new Hispanic owned small businesses. In stark contrast to Trump's multiple campaign stops, Joe Biden kept a low profile Wednesday, voting in Delaware and holding a COVID briefing where he slammed the president for his, quote, reckless rallies. Seven people had been hospitalized after a Trump rally in Nebraska Tuesday night when supporters were left stranded, waiting for buses in near freezing temperatures. Biden called it a reflection of how Trump has handled the pandemic. He gets his photo op and then he gets out. He leaves everyone else to suffer the consequence of his failure to make a responsible plan. In the meantime, Trump is calling for the prosecution of Miles Taylor after Taylor revealed himself as anonymous, the person the New York Times described as a former senior administration official who wrote an op-ed critical of the president. Turned out to be a low-level staffer, a sleazebag, who's never worked in the White House. This guy, in my opinion, he should be prosecuted. Taylor wrote the article in 2018 when he likely had little interaction with senior officials in the West Wing, according to ABC's Jonathan Carl. Miles Taylor, hardly a household name. At the time, he was the deputy chief of staff for the Secretary of Homeland Security. I think many people were under the impression, I know I was, that the article was written by somebody with a much more senior role. Last night, Taylor was asked why he denied being anonymous in the past. I wanted that work to stand on its own two legs and deprive the president of an opportunity to do one more personal attack to distract from his record. Well, the White House calls Taylor a disgruntled, low-level former staffer. Meanwhile, we're learning more about the president's travel plans. He is holding three more rallies in Pennsylvania on Saturday alone.